How's it going, people? I, um, I've actually two videos ahead of myself. I screwed up. I, I took my gold book camping, and I forgot what chapter I was on, and I read seven and eight while camping. Something to look forward to, but I still have to do chapter six of Helaman. I completely forgot about that one. And that's too bad. That was a thirsty chapter. That would have been great for camping. Oh, well. Anyway, I have... I've done uh, the BOM and the Great Outdoors with an audience. <laughs> that's a first for me. Something to look forward to after this video. Oh, and uh, something that I had left over. I've got about six of these left. I brought a whole lot <laughs> camping. Had a great time over the Labor Day weekend. It's just taken me a while to get some of these videos up. I I ended up uh, getting a bit ahead of myself. I, you know, did four and five, and it took me a week to put those up. I just didn't get around to it. And then I went camping and read seven and eight. <laughs> so. Let's make this right. <laughs> Chapter 6 of the Book of Helaman. Oh, and by the way, this is what I'm listening to. It is royalty free music, YouTube. It's royalty free. Lamanites send missionaries to Nephites. Peace and freedom abound. <laughs> the land of Lehi and the land of Mulek. Tesorum and his son murdered. Gaddy Anton robbers seize government. That sucks. One. And it came to pass. That's really nice. It's a blonde ale. Curveball. It's seasonal. So get it while it's still around. Or wait till the next season. That when the 60 and second year of the reign of the judges, which was uh, BC 29, had ended all these things that happened. And the Lamanites had become, the more part of them, a righteous people, insomuch that their righteousness did exceed the Nephites, because of their firmness and their steadfastness in faith. Two, for behold, there were many of the Nephites who had become hardened and impenitent and grossly wicked. Insomuch that they did reject the word of God and all the preaching and prophesying which did come among them. Three. Nevertheless, the people of the church did have great joy because of the conversion of the Lamanites Yay, because of the Church of God, which had been established among them. And they did fo fellowship one with another, and did rejoice one with another, and did have great joy, because they were rejoicing one with another. That's why they had great joy. You can't rejoice without having joy, right? I know, I'm nitpicking here, right? <laughs> it's a nitpick. Four. And it came to pass. See, I was just getting annoyed that the, the drinks weren't forthcoming. But now, it is coming to pass. Oh, so nice. That. Many of the Lamanites did come down into the land of Zarahimla 
and did declare unto the people of Nephites the manner of their conversion, and did exhort them to faith and repentance. Five. Yea, and many did preach with exceedingly great power and authority unto the bringing down many of them into the depths of humility to be the humble followers of God and the Lamb now that they know they're nothing. So they may as well just be another sheep because fuck it. You want to live forever or not? Six. And it came to pass. That many of the Lamanites, many of the Lamanites did go into the land northward, and also Nephi and Lehi went into the land northward to preach unto the people, and thus ended the sixty and third year. Seven. And behold, there was peace in all the land, insomuch that the Nephites did go into whatsoever part of the land they would, whether among the Nephites or the Lamanites. Eight. And it came to that. Not too bad, huh? It's like, <laughs> this is free, but it costs like $8 to mail it to you. But, just the same, and you can use it in a movie or whatever the fuck, they got like different links, and uh, for like transition, it's funny, there's files for like one song, and there's like all these choices and formats, might check it out, I'll put a link below, I'm not trying to sell or be, do a commercial, I just think it's kind of cool. Eight. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did also go whithersoever, whithersoever they would. Whether it were among the Lamanites or among the Nephites, and thus they did have free intercourse one with another to buy and sell and to get gain according to their desire. Nine, and it came to pass. <sighs> Refreshing. That they became exceeding rich, both the Lamanites and the Nephites. Sounds like capitalism. I kind of like that. Anyone can get rich, you know, <laughs> or not. They did have an exceeding plenty of gold and of silver and of all manner of precious metals, which you could have just said and left the other parts out and saved some precious metals, both in the land south and in the land north. Ten. Now. The land south was called Lehi, and the land north was called Mulek, after the son of Zedekiah. Really? Let's see, where the fuck uh, Zedekiah is? Zedekiah. It's got to be like Kings or Chronicles. Or... Sorry, I don't have a photographic memory. Uh, anyway, I remember reading about that. Yeah, they, they they killed every one of Zedekiah's sons in front of him, and then they put his eyes out and drug him through the streets in chains. I remember that. But these guys split already. And Mulek, this un, 
unknown son of Zedekiah gets on a boat with a bunch of other people and lands on the on the other part of this continent I live on. Explaining a lot. Except where are the artifacts? Or the evidence? Even the gold plates are gone. They're not on the planet anymore. Okay. Um. Yeah, the son of Zedekiah, for the Lord did bring Ulick into the land north, and Lehi into the land south, and they didn't even know about each other. It's kind of like Swiss Family Robinson or some shit, you know? Not really, I'm sorry, that's stupid. Eleven! And behold, there was all manner of gold in both these lands and of silver and of precious ore of every kind like you said already and there were also curious workmen who did work of all kinds of ore and did refine it and thus they became rich and we can find no coins no metal tools, no metal weapons, no cement buildings, no roads, uh, no bones of horses that lived during that time, because they all died out around some time in the Ice Age, I believe. Not an expert, but something like that. All right, moving on. Twelve. And they did raise grain in abundance, both in the north and the south. And they did flourish exceedingly, both in the north and the south. And they did multiply and wax exceedingly strong in the land. And they did raise many flocks and herds, yea, many fatlings. Sounds good. Thirteen. Behold, their women did toil and spin, and did make all manner of cloth, and fine twine linen, and cloth of every kind, to clothe their nakedness, because that's what clothes are for. Did you need to say that every time? We get it. They made cloth. Leave it alone. I mean, I can see when it's like you're, you know, weaving veils to Asherah or some shit, you know? But, uh, <laughs> otherwise, we get it. God, I wish I could go back in time and go, <laughs> write it better, dickhead. You're a lousy fraud. I can't believe anyone believes this shit. <sighs> yeah, to clothe their nakedness. And thus the sixty and fourth year did pass away in peace. Fourteen. And in the sixty and fifth year they did also have great joy and peace. Yay. Yay. Much preaching and much prophecies concerning that which was to come. And thus passed away the sixty and fifth year. Fifteen. And it came to pass, finally, hmm. that in the sixty and sixth year of the reign of the judges, behold. Sezoram was murdered by an unknown hand as he sat upon the judgment seat. Hang on. Too bad. I mean the music. This is excellent. 
Oh, where was I? Let's see. Oh, that's right. I was in the middle of 15, and uh, it came to pass. <sighs> that in the same year that his son, who had been appointed by the people in his stead, was also murdered. You'd think they'd have beefed up security. And thus ended the 60 and 60. So you didn't need to say that part then. I mean, weren't they doing a rough draft? And then they... I'm just wondering. I think it's been abridged and rewritten and re-edited, you know, by, you know, Moroni and, and Mormon and, and plus the author and... So it sounds so homogenous. Sixteen. And in the commencement of the sixty and seventh year, which is BC twenty five, according to the footnote. Yeah, in the sixty and seventh year, the people began to grow exceedingly. Wicked again. So they got something to talk about. Now. Seventeen. For behold, the Lord had blessed them so long with the riches of the world that they had not been stirred up to anger, to wars, nor bloodshed. Therefore, they began to set their hearts upon their riches. <laughs> Yea, they began to seek to get gain that they might be lifted up one above another. Therefore, they began to commit secret murders and to rob and to plunder that they might get gain. Eighteen. And now, behold, those murderers and plunderers were a band who had been formed by Kishkumen and Gadianton. And now it had come to pass that work. Uh, that there were many, even among the Nephites of Gaddy Anton's band. Look out. But, behold, they were more numerous among the more wicked part of the Lamanites. That's the case, I guess. And they were called Gaddy Anton's robbers and murderers. Nineteen. And it was they who did murder the chief judge Caesoram and his son, who never got a name. But at least he got to be chief judge. He didn't live long enough to have a name. <laughs> well, in the judgment seat, just pointing that out, you know, they never named him. <laughs> I guess he was another junior, huh? Just went without saying. Something finally did. <laughs> and behold, they were not found. So it was this gang of robber assassins. And they took out two chief judges. And a wicked case of nepotism. All in one year. The last year. Okay. Now we got that straight right. Twenty, and now it came to pass uh, nice. That's nice. that when the Lamanites found out 
that there were robbers among them, they were exceeding sorrowful, and they did use every means in their power to destroy them off the face of the earth. 21. But behold, Satan did stir up the hearts of the more part of the Nephites, insomuch that they did unite with those bands of robbers, and did enter into their covenants and their oaths, which are kind of the same thing, I suppose, that they would protect and preserve one another in whatsoever difficult circumstances they should be placed, that they should not suffer from their murders and their plunderings and their stealings. Yeah. Yeah, they got like, you know, they got it all worked out. <laughs> it's a silent invasion. 22. And it came to pass. That they did have their signs, yea, their secret signs, and their secret words, and this, that they might distinguish a brother who had entered into the covenant, that whoso, whatsoever wickedness his brother should do, he should not be injured by his brother nor by those who did belong to his band, who had taken his covenant. This sounds like Freemason, you know. This sounds like, you know, sounds Masonic. That's what I meant to say. Of course, I hear a lot of Mormonism is heavily influenced by the Freemasons. 23. I think when he wrote this, he was like down on them, but later on he became one, and then the other stuff contradicts this. I can't wait to get to the DNC. We're going to do it together. I'm going to do the DNC after this. It's going to suck, but we got to do it just once. Come on. 23. And thus, they might murder and plunder and steal and commit whoredom and all manner of wickedness, contrary to the laws of their country and also the laws of their God. 24. And whosoever of those who belong to their band should re reveal unto the world of their wickedness and their abominations. Oh, fuck, I guess I'll drink to that. I don't know how I got myself into this. I'm playing two games at the same time. It ain't fair. But oh well. So, the abominations are optional if you're drinking along. <laughs> if there's a lot of it came to passes. Their abomination should not be tried. Not according to the laws of their country but according to the laws of their wickedness. There's laws of wickedness? Of course, oh, I guess so, yeah, all right. Honor among thieves, which doesn't really exist. It's really... Uh, hang on, I lost my place. The laws of their wickedness. They got wicked laws. <coughs> which had been given by Gaddy Anton and Kishkumen. That sounds like a bad spice. <laughs> 25. Now, behold, it is... It is these secret oaths and covenants which Alma commanded his son should not go forth unto the world. See, he was down on the Freemasons in his youth. 
then he became one and climbed up. And then went, oh wait, uh, on second thought, oh and also about that polygamy shit that I said was bad in this book, it's going to be good later. <laughs> uh, 25. Now, behold, it is these secret oaths and covenants which Alma commanded his son should not go forth unto the world, lest they should be a means of bringing down the people unto destruction again. <laughs> 26. Now, behold, those secret oaths and covenants did not come forth unto Gadianton from the records which they were delivered, which were delivered unto Helaman, but behold, they were put into the heart of Gadianton by that same being who did entice our first parents to partake of the forbidden fruit. Adam and Eve, huh? Okay. You believe that, huh? 27. Interesting. Yea, that same being who did plot with Cain that if he would murder his brother Abel, it should not be known unto the world. You know, it's really interesting is uh, I read the Bible few times. I don't know how many times, actually. Uh, I don't remember Genesis, uh, the story of Cain and Abel being told quite this way, where the devil's talking, because the devil doesn't even appear in Genesis. He's, and he's probably not the snake either, since it said God created him. And he was the most clever of the beasts of the garden. So how is he also the devil? Unless it's a case of possession. In that case, why are we punishing us? Snakes? <sighs> All right. Here. Yeah. Uh, and he did plot with Cain and his followers from that time forth. Yeah, not quite right. Yeah. Uh, Interesting interpretation there. Kind of like Josephus, you know, with his... Oh, wait, hang on. 28. I don't want to get ahead of him. And also, it is that same being who put it into the hearts of the people to build a, to, a tower sufficiently high that they might get to heaven. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Josephus has uh, a theory in the Antiquities. You ever read that? Yeah, it was... Nimrod just wanted to get above the next flood water. And flip God off, apparently. Have an orgy on top of his tower. <laughs> it's like, uh-uh. <laughs> no, we're going to confound your languages and fuck up the world forever. <laughs> yeah, whose fault is that? A tower. I think we could top that tower today, and I think we already have. Uh, 28. Wait, wait. To build a tower? Yeah. Alright, here we go. And it was that same being who led on the people who came from that tower into this land, who spread the works of darkness and abominations. Over the face of the land until he dragged the people down to an entire destruction and to an everlasting end. 29. Yea, it is that same being who put into the heart of Gadianton, now we're in BOM land, <laughs> to carry on the secret work of darkness and, the and of secret murder, 
and he has brought it forth from the beginning of man down to this time. 30. And behold, it is he who is the author of all sin. And behold, he doth carry his works of darkness and secret murder, and doth hand down their plots and their oaths and their covenants and their plans of awful wickedness. And uh, from generation to generation, according as he can get hold upon the hearts of the children of men, 31. And now, behold, he has got great hold upon the hearts of the Nephites, yeah. and so much that they have become exceedingly wicked, yea, the, the more part of them have turned out of the way of righteousness, and did trample under their feet the commandments of God, and did turn unto their own ways, and did build up unto themselves idols of gold, and their, of their gold and their silver. 32. And it came to pass. That all these iniquities did come unto them in the space of not many years, and so much that a more part of it had come unto them in the sixty and seventh year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi. 33. And they did grow in their iniquities in the sixty and eighth year also to the great sorrow and lamentation of the righteous. 34. And thus we see that the Nephites did begin to dwindle in unbelief and, in, and grow in wickedness <clears throat> and abomination. While the Lamanites began to grow exceedingly in the knowledge of their God, yea, they began to keep the statutes and the commandments. The commandments are laws and statutes are laws. And to walk in truth and uprightness before him. Thirty-five. And thus we see that the Spirit of the Lord began to withdraw from the Nephites because of their wickedness. God, I should have drank the wickedness. That would have been wicked. And the hardness of their hearts. Thirty-six. And thus we see that the Lord began to pour out His Spirit upon the Lamanites because of their easiness and willingness to believe in His words. As a matter of fact, I think in the next book they turn white, some of them. <laughs> Can't wait. 37. And came to pass, I need to for another beer. Mighty fine. Curveball, folks, from the Pyramid people. The Pyramid 
brew guys. A plus. Thirty-seven. And it came to pass that the Lamanites did hunt the band of robbers of Daddy Anton, and they did preach the word of God among the more wicked part of them. And so much that this band of robbers was utterly destroyed from among the Lamanites. They used the force. <laughs> Thirty-eight. And it came to pass. On the other hand, that the Nephites did build them up and support them, beginning at the more wicked part of them, until they had overspread all the land of the Nephites, and had seduced the more part of the righteousness, until they had come down to believe in their works and partake of their spoils and to join with them in. Their secret murders and combinations. That's one of those Mormon words. It's uh, part of the Mormon argot, I guess. It's like those secret signs that, you know, that they were talking so bad about. All right. 39. <coughs> Ooh. And thus they did obtain the sole management of the government, insomuch that they did trample under their feet, and smite and rend and turn their backs upon the poor, and the meek, and the humble followers of God. Forty. And thus we see that they were in an awful state and ripening for an everlasting destruction. 41. And it came to pass. <sighs> that thus ended the sixty and eighth year of the reign of the judges over the and we got some big print here. Bigger print. All right, let's read it. It's uh, obviously an announcement of coming events. The prophecy of Nephi, the son of Helaman, not that other guy, and all the other guys in that name, God threatens the people of Nephi that he will visit them in his anger to their utter destruction, except they repent of their wickedness. God smited the people of Nephi with pestilence. They repent and turn unto him. Samuel, a Nephite, prophesies unto the Nephites, comprising chapters 17 through 16. And I believe this is only 16 chapters long, so... This is going to run on to the rest of the book. And I already did the next few chapters, so I'll put those up after this. Actually, I haven't even looked at eight. I'll put up seven after this. And it's silly, and I kind of fuck up the beginning and leave out a, a whole bunch of verse one, but I'll do an annotation where I show what it should have said rather than... Because I, I don't want to retake, and I don't want to read that part sitting here and edit it in, that, that would be lame. So, so I'll do something else that's lame. <laughs> Annotation. Peace. The fuck out. And I guess uh, the next one I'm doing is nine, but I'll see you guys <laughs> in the wilderness. Yep. Up, up in Markleyville. Near Markleyville by Tahoe. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. 
I, first time I've done this with an audience, and damn, I got hammered. 